Hey folks, my name's The Raven. I'm back here again at the Lake Hudson Dark Sky Preserve. We're back here with Mr. Steve Cameron, wind heart maker extraordinaire. He's going to tell you another little segment about some wind harps. Welcome everyone back to the Lake Hudson Dark Sky Preserve here in the social mecca of Southeast Michigan, Hudson. Uh, I'm going to introduce you to a new piece this week. This piece is one that was made by a William Jones of Nayland. He was a Church of England bishop and he crafted this in 1701. William Jones began his work, if you remember from our last episode where I talked about Kersher, William Jones was fascinated with the work and the writings of Kersher and, and the things that he did with the Aeolian harp. There's a little more to the story, but we'll get to that story in another segment. But what happened was that he wrote the book, Physiological Disquisitions. It was a 12 volume encyclopedia of the time, for lack of a better term, very much like Kersher's Mesergia Universalis was. And in it, he devoted a section to describing the Aeolian harp and how it worked. And we'll also get into a little more of how Jones figured or thought, believed how the Aeolian harp worked. But this is an historical recreation. It is crafted on quarter sawn hickory. If you remember from our series last week, I described how the various woods were cut, the flat sawn material where it's sliced through the log. Then there's the quarter sawn material where the log is indeed quartered, and then the quarters are effectively flat sawn the rifts on where the quarters are sliced diagonally and if you see this and perhaps if Raven can get a close-up of this if you look at the end of these these boards here that compose the pieces if you look this is quarter sawn material because you can see how the grains of the wood come vertical through the piece of material and what it does is it leaves this long straight grain on the top well this would be a very traditional wood to use at that time because it dries very well, so it makes it very dimensionally stable. The reason why is because the grains go through. There's no trapped moisture so that it, it, it dries unequal to each other. I have no reference for what kind of wood was used by Jones in, at that time period, but uh, Hickory, he probably would have used chestnut since he was in England and that was a very common wood to use. And uh, hickory is just a very nice wood. It's got an interesting grain. The soundboard here, as you can see, is crafted with a, a very sonophorous wood. It is, this is quarter sawn Sitka spruce. Again, the ver grains go vertical. It helps amplify the sound. You can see what the back of this uh, piece looks like. We have the sound box. You can see the top soundboard. You can see the bottom with the sound holes in it. Um, it is finished with my historical finish the pine tar, the thousand-year-old Scandinavian recipe. So William Jones had these very interesting ideas that he documented in physiological disquisitions about how the Aeolian harp worked. Now, you've had a brief introduction now. You know that we're going to talk more, obviously, about William Jones' physiological disquisitions. So just to recap briefly, it, is a historical piece. It was originally documented in 1781. Uh, it is crafted out of quarter sawn hickory. It is, has uh, quarter sawn Sitka spruce soundboards. I use uh, standard nylon instrument strings. They would have used gut at that time. And I welcome you back next week where we shall talk more about William Jones of Nayland and physiological disquisitions. Until next time, have a good one.